Robinson Crusoe Island. There's a bit of jungle here. And through the trees is the ocean. So I'm just making my way down there to the Robinson Crusoe Beach. my area in the shade, got my seat, so I can sit here, admire the view, and what a glorious day, I mean every day is an adventure and this one I've been looking forward to for some time, just coming out here and just relaxing on the beach and then spending the whole night here watching the sea, the sounds, totally secluded cooking some food here on the beach and just imagining what it would be like if you're really stranded on a desert deserted beach I think you can probably eat these but I think I'll do a bit more research first before I try them so there's loads of mussels here if I dare risk eating them I suppose it depends how desperate I am I would eat them, wouldn't I? Probably very nice. Mules. You see this whole section of the beach, there's nobody. It's a beautiful hot day. There's nobody at all. Down the other end, there's, there's people, but not down this side. Oh. They're so comfortable. Fresh air, sea breeze, sand of the waves. Oh, time for a short nap. One of the things that Robinson Crusoe retrieved from the ship that sank was the Bible that was on board because he valued the Bible. And so he retrieved that to the island. And I can imagine him sitting here on, on the island and reading, uh, say, John 3.16, For God so loved the world that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So there we have it. Robinson Crusoe brought his Bible. And I brought my Bible today, the most important thing to bring with you, and more importantly, to hide in your heart.
so that the word of God becomes part of you. I've been on the beach, you need to know that you're above the tide line, as I found out last time. Um, so how can you find it out? Because now the tide is going out, and it's still going out, I think. So I'm not actually going to know, am I, for another six hours or more. And now it's only, what, 3.30 now? So maybe it's going to be 10 o'clock. So it's not too bad if it's 10 o'clock. Um, but you can check by looking at the stones to where the most recent tide was. Um, so you can, it definitely comes up here. Um, but... Um, you can see these stones here, the tide definitely comes up because because you've got water there still on top of the rocks. So the water definitely comes this far, but which, how far does it go? And if you move these stones, you can see it's wet underneath. So you can see that, so it's wet underneath. So, that, so just check how far it goes, but it's still wet underneath. Maybe here it is, it's wet there. But when you go to here, it's not wet. So the recent tide came to here, came to this level here. And so my camp is far away from that. So no problem at all. It's a view of my camp from further down the rocks. It's gone all the way out and uh, probably I don't know how much further it goes out. I don't think I'd go swimming but I'm tempted to go in the water. It's just such a beautiful day. It could be anywhere. I mean it must be low 20 degrees, low 20s Celsius. I'm so tempted to go in and paddle. I think I will. I'm just going to go and paddle a little bit. Hey Tripper you have to paddle don't you? Whoa! Oh! Oh! Whoa! Whew. It is icy, icy cold. And there's the camp at the back. I'm just trying to put together some firewood and um, there's some wood right here not sure how long it will keep me going but it might be something I can do later there's lots of sticks and stuff here and just break these pieces off someone's had a go at burning this before it looks like but I can pour some of this off and have some fuel ready for tonight the other thing Robinson Crusoe did to keep himself active was he made things. So, you know, finding firewood, making a log cabin, all the things you need. Um, you know, you've got plenty of time, um, but you have to use what is there around you uh, in order to make what you need. Um, so that's what he did. So I'm just doing a very small exercise here, trying to see if I can find enough sticks to light a little campfire later. But it's really fun, it'll be really satisfying if it works. So I found these two rocks, I'm going to make a little fire pit. Um, the idea is that I can put my grill over the top, so I'll need to move that for now, and then dig it out a bit. My griddle, very small one, and I'll put it in something like that. I suppose I can change the distances one of it higher, depends how the fire goes, or lower. It will just be over the charcoal and hopefully I'll cook my sausages on that tonight if I have enough firewood and if I can get the fire going. Let's see. Let's see if I can get any pieces off here and then take them back to the camp.
it's going to treat now. I've got the kindling wood going. Get the heat coming off it. You feel the heat from here. Um, and just keep building it up until I get some charcoal. And then I'll put the um, food on it, all being well. So this driftwood's burning fine, absolutely perfect. So now I've got plenty of charcoal now there. It's a bit like making a barbecue, isn't it? So I'm waiting for the flames to go down and I've taken some of the wood off so I can put it back on afterwards and maybe get it going again afterwards and keep it going after the meal. I've got a big log that I could perhaps go, keep going into the night. Um, that would be nice. Um, but I'm just trying to get the charcoals to, to the flames to go down and then I'll start cooking over the charcoals, which should be fine for cooking my mixed grill Robinson Crusoe's mixed grill so let's see how, how this goes now they're starting to sizzle because I put the um, grill pan much lower to the charcoal they're cooking really nicely just not too quickly normally a like a barbecued sausage is like a char charcoal stick isn't it it's absolutely burnt all over and then absolutely black the reason I'm doing it like this is so that they cook through on the inside um, in the pan and then to get a bit of the you know um, to brown them and make them more sort of barbecue like I'll put them on the grill on their own just for a couple of minutes at the end once they're cooked through So I've lowered the grill pan a bit further just to get a bit more heat into it. And the potatoes are done now perfectly. Now I'm going to put the sausages just on the on the um, griddle itself and take the rest of it off. Leave that there and put them on here. Just good to make sure everything's cooked through. I think that's absolutely perfect now. Just a little bit smoked, a little bit browned, they're totally cooked through, and they're done. So I'm going to serve this now. That's it. So that's the first course. The first course of my meal here tonight. Just sausage and potatoes. Quite simple but very nice. So I'm going to eat that now, admiring this wonderful view. What could be better? Eating food you cook yourself and admiring this wonderful view as it approaches sort of sunset time. Sausages. Perfectly cooked. It tastes slightly smoked because of the barbecue, because of the fire. Very, very nice. A nice piece of um, thin cut beef sirloin steak. So it's thin cut, it should cook perfectly. Um, and I'm going to put it on this grill uh, just as it is and see what happens. Hopefully, it doesn't stick. steak's cooking perfectly now. Just lowered the grill griddle right down near the charcoals as they're cooling off. Shouldn't take very long at all, it's quite thin. I might flip it over now. See what's happening. Cooking perfectly, see? Well, I'm really, really pleased with this, the first time cooking on a fire. I mean, 
first time cooking on a fire from a beach from uh, from wood I found so very satisfying isn't it you don't need anything really just just that little griddle pan obviously it takes time but you've got plenty of time when you come out for a break like this really getting away from everything all you can hear is the waves there's nobody here I've even got no white internet signal so I can't even phone anyone or anything I've just got no service so I'm basically a total incom incommunicado just like Robinson Crusoe was can't text anyone not even my wife to, to let her know I'm okay I hope she assumes I am um, I can't um, phone anyone email anyone text anyone watch any news websites nothing I've got nothing I've just got um, the fire the food the view and um, just the lovely surroundings to enjoy no no distractions talk about a um, chilling out this is a brilliant way of doing it so I put the potatoes around the edge just to reheat those they're parboiled so they're just been slightly smoked I don't want them burnt the steak's done so this is um, the second part in the mixed grill it's a good meal isn't it the steak's not huge and um, it's not that thick so I think that'll be perfectly done don't want to overdo it so I'm going to serve it now without wasting any further the wind always changes to follow around you around so perfectly done steak so there's steak and potatoes um, another part of my meal the mixed grill trip of the night it's an appetizer spritzer apple and passion fruits because yeah, I don't drink alcohol so this is my drink as I watch the sun go down although you can't see the sunset from this beach but I guess we'll be able to see the sunrise in the morning I'm not quite sure so cheers so I've decided to put the fire out because I was running out of firewood it was spitting and now I want to put the tent up I think it's going to be nicer night inside the tent because there's no doubt going to be a slight chill clear sky and also the insects and things like that so I've just sort of flattened the beach where I can uh, flattened the pebbles to try and make it as flat as possible um, and then I'm going to put put up the tent and then uh, see how it goes from there So it's nine o'clock, it's going dark, getting ready for the night. And I've got my tent up behind me in my space there. That's just, that's where I am. So I'm um, looking forward to getting in the tent and having a night's, night's sleep, hopefully. But I do want to wait for the tide because you can see the tide is coming in and it's the old favorite, isn't it? It comes in very quick and I just want to make sure the tide is turned. It's a little bit tricky with the gravel to get the tent pegs in or to get them to hold so what I've done is I've gone round with big rocks on top so that really helps otherwise they keep coming out all the time it's very infuriating so now I'm well and truly pegged in and we're probably going into the last maybe 20 minutes half an hour of daylight and then it'll be time to go to bed so I'm waiting for the tide to come in um, it's now 10 o'clock I'm not sure what time the tide will come in but you can probably hear it now you can hear it but you can't see it it's about 15 meters away so I'm waiting for that until I can uh, then I'll go to bed after I know the tide has turned so this is the high tide now as far as here, the feet are wet to here, and I think it's turned now because um, it hasn't come any further for the last 10 minutes. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. To the tent. So I think it's no problem. So I'll be going to bed very soon. I'm in the sleeping bag of um, 
very comfortable in here. It's quite cozy. But you can hear the sea outside because the tide's not that far away, so it's very, very loud. Can you hear it? Because of the uh, gravel and the uh, pebbles. Anyway, it will be going. It's going out now, so it will gradually die away, and then uh, I should be able to have a nice sleep. see the glimmer of the camping stove I've got up it's um it's very early it's, it's just before four o'clock I just felt wanting to get up I mean um, I feel not too bad I mean it, it was um the sea is just difficult to get used to the noise of and the sounds of um, which is a really nice sound but it's can be quite loud at night if you're not used to it so I'm lighting the camping stove and um, it isn't as dark as it looks on, on the camera actually um, because the sun is already coming up, it's already getting lighter but it's good to start off the new day with a nice cup of tea so that's what I'm going to do just put the kettle on the stove's going fine now so put the kettle on there you go, so tea is on order adventure begins another new day well now it's um obviously light so I just want to show you this um so that's the tent and this is how far the water came up to it's a few steps down but I want to show you because you can see here in the pebbles this is where the tide came to. You see that? The mark where the tide came to? And that's where the tent was. Um, so it wasn't that far away. I mean, it's far enough not to worry, but I'll show you later. But when you walk along here, you'll see that I, I was totally cut off. I thought I might be, um, but the beach was totally not accessible um, when the tide was fully in. So again, you can see the tide line here with the darker colored uh, pebbles. And then you can see all these rocks here. Now, all these rocks have fallen down because this is a cliff erosion. Um, so it's quite scary in a way, isn't it? Because these big blocks are literally like where the cliff where I was. I mean, I did know about that last night, um, but you know, this, Whoop. and there you go some started to fall down did you see that so basically there was I was cut off the only way through if I wanted to leave during high tide would have been over these rocks and you can see how precarious it is up there. You can see here that's where a whole load has come has come down. So imagine if you had put your tent underneath that lot. That would have been goodbye to you and nobody would, would know, literally nobody would know where you've gone, would they? You would literally have disappeared without a trace. But it does make you think, doesn't it? It does make you think when it's when it goes, how much notice would you have? I don't know. Does it go in only strong winds and strong weather? We've just seen it's falling down there now. So anyway, I'm not worried. Don't worry about me. It's just one of those things you need to be aware of. <laughs> I tried to make it into more of a scrambled egg because um, it was that's what I wanted to do so it's more of a scrambled egg which is still going to be nice 
so that's just finishing off the egg heating the sausages now it's all sizzling again that's what we like to hear picking these I've opened them up so that they heat on the inside as well I like them warm and then I think I'm gonna make a nice sandwich out of this got some nice homemade bread that'll be perfect perfect start to the day it's so perfect what a wonderful sight first thing in the morning isn't it sausages egg and then my room with the view and enjoying the lovely view panoramic view as far as the eye can see not a soul in sight and a beautiful new day done now you can see that totally done and can put it there and then I'm going to set my bread my homemade bread which my wife made nice fresh bread got three slices of that two sausages I've got an extra one like that and then transfer the omelette or whatever you want to call it the egg on top egg there have a slice of bread on top like that and cut it through straight down the middle and there you have the breakfast sausage and egg sandwich on the beach fantastic The sun has just come out above the ridge and I'm just packed away, almost ready to go. So, an unforgettable place. Okay, so you can see the sun's come out. It's uh, six o'clock in the morning and um, it's time to head out of here, head off this beach. I need to get out of here before obviously the tide comes back in, but there's no danger of that right now. But anyway, it's time to go home, six o'clock in the morning. Lovely night and uh, what an adventure. I learned so much again. And uh, thank you so much for watching and joining this adventure. And uh, tune in next time for the next one. I uh, can't wait for the next time I can get out into the fresh air and show you some new things and hopefully it will inspire you to go and do something a little bit more a little more adventure so uh, bye for now and uh, bon voyage until next time bye Robinson Crusoe Beach I've been rescued And always take your rubbish with you and leave it just like you found it. Do you know me? Okay, thanks. Bye for now.